Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bait and Board Variety Channel. In today's video we're going to be doing is another how-to mechanical video. Now we only have one other of these on the channel. Or I did some wiring but I didn't explain much about what I was doing. So today we're going to take a different turn, add some different content to the channel, uh, to our mechanical side. So what we're going to be doing today, is as by the title you can tell, I'm going to be showing you how to add another receptacle into a box that already has another one already in there. So why I need to do this is I have a boot dryer here uh, for your shoes. I'm thinking about getting another one in case I need to put other shoes on there. But as you may see, that plug's already full because it has a boot dryer and the hot water tank inducer motor plugged into that. So we're going to need another plug in there if we're going to get another boot dryer. So we're going to show you today how to install that. All right, so let's go over the tools that you're going to need for this job. So, uh, obviously a needle mat, depending on what you're doing, you might be on carpet or something. But since I'm on concrete, need something to protect my knees, use that. A pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of wire strippers, any kind, uh, a pair of side cuts. These are offsets, but you can have regulars. Um, uh, a larger flathead screwdriver, uh, six and one driver. This is optional. You can use Phillips and regular flatheads if you want. I just did this because it makes it a little quicker. And a smaller flathead, and then a micro flathead. This is really optional, but we will need it uh, later. I just like to have it for breaking those little tabs off on the plug. And then you can have either a vibrate tester or a plug-in tester or some. UEI tester or something like that to test your power to your plug. You will also need either a 15 amp or a 20 amp receptacle, preferably high quality commercial grade like these. A duplex cover for this since we're going to be adding another plug into the same box. And either 12 gauge 12 2 with two conductors with ground Romex wire if you have 20 amp and or 14 gauge wire uh, for 15 amp with two conductors in ground. And you only need a small piece of either of these to go to your next plug. The next thing you need to affirm before making your purchases of your device is whether you have a 15 amp or 20 amp in there. Now you can do this by checking, by looking at the plug. This is a 15 amp. They all have uh, straight slots. A 20 amp has this little T slot. It's a telltale sign. You can check to see if you're on a 15 amp or 20 amp circuit. That will also tell you what type of plug you need. You need to go to your panel for that. That's where we're gonna head next. So here we are at our panel here. Yours may be labeled on the side what each breaker's on. Um, this one is, it may not be. So there's a different method I have for you if, if it's not labeled. But since it is labeled, right here is our thing hot water tank plug GFI by garage cans. And it says 20 on the side of the breaker and the it's on a 20 amp circuit and I need a 20 amp plug. If it says 15 like this, this is on our circuit, but that means you need one of these plugs. Most and more likely that's correct, but it may not always be. It doesn't matter if you have a 20 amp plug and a 15 amp circuit or not, you just won't be getting 20 amps out of that plug. If you put a 15 amp on a 20 amp, you're putting a lot of power to a plug that's not really designed for that, and you won't be getting 20 amps out of it. So it's key to use what it's designed for. So let's go look at, let's um, kill power to this circuit so that we can work on it without getting shocked. So now what we need to do is we need to affirm that we don't have power in here. So you may, since you shut the breaker off, not have any lights in the room if the lights are on the same circuit as the plug. So you're just gonna have to have somebody shine a light or something. In this case, that isn't the case. Stick that in there. This will light up. I'll tell you, as you can see, it's not lighting up. Also, if you don't have a labeled panel, like I said, and you may need to just flick breakers to see what it is, you can stick one of these noise testers in there that vibrate real loudly so you can hear it like it's up on the second floor and you're down in the basement. You can hear when this goes out to know when you flip the right breaker. But we don't need to do that today. 
So now we've affirmed that we don't have any power. So we can start pulling this apart. Before we do that, we need to prep our plug. So we will be switching to a double cover to have two plugs in there. But um, this will not fit in here as it is right now. See how it's not going in there? That's because these ears on here need to be bent off for metal boxes. If you have a plastic box, you just screw this into the box and put the cover over. Well, these, these have to be bolted to the back of the cover and then the cover's pushed onto the box and screwed down. So these have to be bent off first if you're using a metal box. So you take your needle nose pliers, you took these on the ends, these have this little crease in it. You wanna bend right on that crease, make sure you stay inside and just wiggle that off like that. And then do that for all four sides. Now, we have to take this piece off too. Now you can do this with needle nose, but you have to get it right in that crease. Because if you don't, you're gonna try end up busting this whole apparatus off and then you're going to be in not good shape. So what you can do is if you're not as experienced, take a pair of side cuts and lay them right in that crease there and squeeze down real hard you could take your needle nose pliers and pull it off just like that and we're gonna do the same at the bottom that fits right in there just like that so now what we need to do is we need to take these screws out of these tops because they will be going through the front of the cover and then have a nut on the back of them so this can be bolted to the cover and you'll see what I'm doing there as we go through that. So just take your uh, six and one driver with the combo tip and just wind these out of here. And we won't be needing to keep these, these black tabs. Now on the bottom of this bottom screw, you're not gonna be able to do that because there's one of these grounding tabs here. This screw isn't gonna come out of here, so you have to lift up on this grounding screw, and this takes a little bit of work with your hands. You could take your micro screwdriver, and you can stick it right on that tab there, that metal tab. And if you can't really see what I'm doing, you'll see what I mean when you try to wind that screw out of there. All right, so now we have that out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go pull that plug apart and get it wired up, and then we'll be back to this cover. So now what you could do is you could take your larger flathead here, and we're gonna start by unscrewing the front part of the cover. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this plug out. So I already have this kind of set up for what we're about to do. I already have the ground wire that I'm gonna need ready. Now yours obviously may or may not be like that. But we're just gonna unscrew that. Now what we need to do is you can see that we have those nuts on the inside of there. Just unloosen them with your hand. Just like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, uh, we have, there's another screw right there. We can take our flathead, take it out. That's just in the center of the plug. So now we can just pull that off of there like that. So that's our plug. Keep this cover for future things. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna get our other plug over here and I'm gonna show you how we're going to uh, wire this up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to travel our two wires to our other plug. I already have the ground wire in there. That's the bare copper wire. You're, you're most likely going to have a um, white wire and a black wire. And then you're going to have a bare wire. So mine's already in there that I'm going to chain to this one. So that's why I only have these two. But basically we're just traveling from one plug to the next. So I already have these loops been on here, but I recommend these high quality commercial grade plugs because you can stab the wires into the back and the screw will tighten them down um, uh, 
and make a secure connection. You don't have to worry about making these hooks on your wires, but I already have them because these are the ones I used in that ele other electrical video on my channel. Um, so I'm just going to leave them on here and wrap them around this screw. But first what we need to do is we need to strip this sheathing off so we can get to our bare copper beneath which is going to conduct the electricity into the terminal. This is where you could take your wire strippers and do this. So I, since I have a 20 amp circuit, I have a 12 gauge wire. You may have a 15 amp, so you might have 14. Just know on your strippers, it t the uh, hole, use the right hole for that. So I'm gonna use the hole labeled 12. You can't really see it from here, but there's one that says 12. And we're just going to stick that on there, pull it off like that. Crimp and then pull. And that is our wire there just like that now we're going to trim a little bit off of that because we only need this much wire to stab the wire in the back you would need more if you were to put these hooks on the wire so we're going to see that we have a gold screw a white screw and a green screw um, our gold screws as you can see is for our um, black hot wire, our white screws are for our white neutral wire, and the green is for the bare ground, which I already have in here. So what I did is I wiped this, I uh, wrapped this around here, and then this is going to be the other end that's going to go to the other plug. Now what we're going to do is we're going to first loosen up the other terminals. So this is where you have your combo tip and your 6-in-1 or your flathead. Do not use a Phillips head tip on these new screw, new pl newer plug screws. You will eventually strip the head out and you won't be able to get it to turn. And you'll be super annoyed. So just wind those out. Now this is going to be a little bit harder to get a J-hook on here because it is intended for you to stab it in the back, but uh, it will work. So basically, Make sure we put this loop on the way the screw's turning. So if our screw's turning that way, we want this loop on this way so it pulls that loop in. If the screw's turning this way, you put it on that way, it's going to pull it out and not allow for the secure of the connection. So, and now we're going to keep uh, pressure on that to keep it pulled where we want. And we're going to tighten this down. Make sure you make them as tight as possible. It's loose connections and electrical make heat and heat causes problems. So now with that done, we're going to flip our plug back over. We're going to do the same on this side with our white neutral wire. So we have that on there, and we're going to tighten that down. This is what we want to see right here. This is about the right amount of copper sticking off that end. You don't want to see too much bare copper sticking out on the other side of the screw because that can cause arcing. You don't want to see too much, not enough insulation stripped off that we're wrapping this insulation around the screw and then you're not getting as good of a uh, conducting there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to orient this the way we want. We're going to take our other um, plug, make sure these terminals we're not using are tightened down. because we're not going to be using them and those will make heat if we don't. And then now we're going to stick these wires in the back. So uh, just stick that under there like that and then tighten the screw down. And then this tab will crimp over that wire providing a secure connection.
just like that. So we have that. And then we're going to do the same with this white here. Let's stick this right in there. Tighten that down. So now we have that, and then our bare copper wire is going to now travel from this plug over to here on this terminal. And just stick that in there as well. And then tighten that down. Try not to drop your stuff. Okay, so we have that. So that's our apparatus there. Now I have our two plugs hooked up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin to uh, bolt these to the covers now. So we're gonna pull the first one into here, just like that. We're gonna put the middle screw in first, that way we hold it in there so we can get our nuts on to the back, which will be a little more tedious. And then take your smaller flathead, widen that in. I always like to make them look straight like that. And now we take our screws with our nuts, stick this in here, make sure it goes to the plug end. We're gonna run the nut down just like that until we get it tight against the cover. All right, now we're gonna stick the other plug into the cover. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we have to mold the wires to fit in there. Now the key thing we wanna do is we need to keep these grounds down because if they come anywhere near these terminals, they will short the apparatus out. So now we're gonna take our bigger flathead now. We're gonna put these two screws in here. Now the reason there's only two holes here is because there's four holes in this cover is just so if you orient the box differently, like diagonal or that way, you can use these other holes depending on how it is. So if there was only two holes here, you orient the box differently and you weren't paying attention to your cover, then you wouldn't be able to put it on. We're going to put the one cup screw in, get it started, and then put the other side in. Because we don't want to tighten one side the whole way up and move to the next one because you'll bend the cover. Now uh, we have this in. So now what we do is just buff this off, all the fingerprints we put on it, things like that. So now we have our plug in. So now uh, come back to your panel when you're finished and turn your power back on. If you have an explosion, you probably wired something incorrectly or something, which we did not have an explosion in there. Take our receptacle tester, stick it in there. Two lights lit means it's wired correctly. If 
you have something different, look at the tester, it'll tell you what the wire is. Your power. And then you can stick this in there, this is your vibrator tester. And we are good. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for today's video. If you like, subscribe, so it helps out the Bando Variety channel. Stay tuned for more mechanical stuff and more videos coming up.